Welcome back everybody to the Home Inspection YouTube channel. Today, I got a good one, and it's different than my other videos, but still home inspection related. Uh, today, we are gonna go to one of my home inspector's houses where they are removing old stucco, or some people like to call it plaster, those 1970 homes, and they're taking it off. But this one is stucco, you know, it has three layers, has a lathe, but it was actually installed over gypsum. So we get to actually see the damage behind this old stucco that you would not be able to see if you were just a doing a regular home inspection. You can only see it if you remove the material off the wall. They knew they had issues, but we're actually gonna get to go over there and see how bad the issues are. Also, I got a new tool from Tool Experts and they are slip proof shorts. So you slide them over your pants and I should be able to climb this roof and test them out as well. So it got two parts of this video. So make sure you stick around to check out the tool and uh, the stucco damage. All right, let's go check it out. Okay, so it's pretty bright outside. That's why I got the shades on. But uh, so I showed up to Josh's house and Josh Donahoe, Josh too, the big guy, um, showed up to his house and they haven't started removing the stucco yet. So what we're gonna actually do is break it open in a spot that we think is bad so you can see behind it and actually watch the stucco come off the wall. Okay, so the spot we're gonna open up is uh, right here to the left of the window where you can kind of see this rotted wood. I forgot my laser pointer, but where that rotted wood is, we wanna break that open. We think that's where the most amount of damage will be. And uh, we're gonna check that out. So we're gonna clean off the roof and uh, see what we find. So inspectors, they always call out, you know, no roof to siding contact. You always want that two inch clearance. And here is the main reason why. You can see uh, how the where, how the water travels down and it's rotted out this wood in the, in the resting space. And then also you can see the flashing is completely rusted too because it's not shedding water and it was just coming down and resting and holding against the flashing. Um, and yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this spot open so you can see what it looks behind looks like behind the stucco and also see the uh, uh, gypsum board that it's attached to. At least, at least that on the other side of the house there was gypsum board. We don't know uh, about here. Okay, while Josh is getting the tools so we can break open the stucco, I wanted to walk around the property a little bit so you can see they removed all the siding on this side of the structure. This is why we're gonna break open in the front. They already took everything down here. Uh, but what happened was whenever they installed the stucco on this side, they didn't put any overhead flashing on the window. And without any overhead flashing, you can see where the, you have a lot of water damage on the header above this window. He said that uh, the water was actually leaking inside uh, the structure and that's when he was like, okay, I really need to take care of this. So let me go up there and show you absolutely why you need overhead flashing on windows and uh, uh, why the manufacturer requires it. So let's go check it out. Okay, a quick break. We're gonna knock out these shorts real quick. They are by Steep Gear and they are a safety gear so you do not slip on roofs. So what we're gonna do to test these bad boys out is uh, we're gonna walk up this roof with, uh, without them on, and I'm gonna just show you how steep it is. It's a pretty steep roof. This is like an eight and 12 or a 10 and 12 roof. So it's not something like a, typically as a home inspector, you're gonna walk just straight up without, you know, some type of special shoe or uh, the risk of actually falling off the roof. So if you are gonna tackle one of these, it might be a good idea to pick up some steep, steep gear shorts here. And they're actually built pretty well. You know, I like this elastic band so you don't have to change out your old pants. What they're gonna do is just slide over your your pants so you can knock, I'll throw them on real quick and take them off. And uh, um, they actually have these zippers too. So if you got some bigger legs, they'll, they'll fit in. So we're gonna knock them out and, and uh, see how they perform. Typically if I walk a roof like this, it's, yeah, it's, it's really, it's gonna be kind of slippery. 
you know you got the mud from the old roof debris up here and um, it's it's not an easy roof to climb so as I just like walk up it it's super easy right <laughs> but this isn't something you would normally walk up without some sort of easier path or a safer path uh, without the risk of falling so let's see I like these shoes though these shoes always help me all right, let's get these uh, shorts on and uh, see how it perform, how they perform. Yeah, I like these zippers. The zippers uh, go over my boots. You know, I got pretty decent sized boots pretty easily. And these are a medium. I'm a pretty small dude too as well, so you gotta take that in the size count if you are going to purchase these. I'd say for a medium, with me being the size of guy I am, I'd say these fit kind of snug uh, for something like this. So comes with a, a belt. I don't know if the belt's really necessary with the elastic bands, but you never know. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna go with the uh, we'll walk up it, and then we'll kind of butt scoot down and see how it, how it, how it handles. <laughs> I'm still sliding a little bit. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. Maybe I didn't do it correctly. I don't know. What do you think, Josh? I think if you had three points of contact, it'd be a lot better. Like uh, not just like keeping your shorts. hand down. Yeah. <clears throat> keeping one foot up like you did, so one boots on the ground. So we're not going to just rely just, just on the shorts, so. Yeah, I'd stay if you keep a, I still have a, a slide though. It's not going to keep you on the roof completely, so you need to make sure that you have some sort of contact with the roof. Let's see, get as much contact as we can. But as you can tell, um, there's no real damage or anything, no wear and tear on the shorts. So one more cool thing about the shorts, I found out that there is no pockets. The pockets actually go straight into your pockets. So if you have tools or something that you need to get to or your phone whenever you're on the roof, you can actually just reach straight through and get right in to the items that you need. So that's a, that's a really nice feature of these shorts. So this is more of a six and 12 roof not the steeper one like 8 and 12 so let's see how the uh, shorts perform on something like this typically on a 6 and 12 roof I'm not gonna slide too much you can see my my boots stick fine this roof is even dirty I'm not gonna be sliding traditionally too much but again this is an older roof and uh, we'll see you know there's always is a chance of slipping so let's see how it performs if I just you know, kind of fall I guess I mean they stuck <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. so we'll uh, kind of go a little bit I mean, I'm not moving at all so they did stick immediately I can feel the tension across the shorts too so I know they grabbed so if you are on a steeper roof such as 10 and 12, make sure you know that the shorts are going to slow you down, but they're not going to stop you 100%. So you're going to have to lay completely flat or make sure that there's a path, you're, you're pathing on the roof, there's, there's going to be something to grab onto. So this is 1973 stucco, and we're going to start ripping it off to show you what the problems were with it, why it was not flashed right, why flashing is required now show you the gypsum board substrate that's on this which is not allowed anymore and what happens if you let it go unattended to everything behind it that looks good but that's a piece of stucco that they build up behind it and it's just so deteriorated that it just pops off but then you can start seeing the rotten laugh 
Yeah, it just kind of falls apart, doesn't it? Yeah. You're not even applying any real force there. I mean, it just... The lath isn't supposed to do that. So you can see this is the the gypsum board right here. Yep. And how, how fragile that is. And that doesn't hold up the stucco very well. So the stucco actually just has nothing to attach to. And it, it falls apart. And the, is this the... What is that? Right into the, the insulation yep. right there. Yep. So very little barrier between uh, the home. Yeah, there's the insulation right there. But you can see the, the counter flash is all rusted all the way down. Everything's just rotten. And this is actually my house. We bought this house knowing it was gonna have to be done. So don't always be afraid of having stuff like this on a house on a home inspection. You just have to make sure you can budget for it for the repair because of this. But I don't know, you, you can see it. What they do is they put a two by four across the bottom and that's actually what's holding all the stucco up. That's why it's built up so much is this is actually sitting on top of the two by four, which is supporting this. And this is how we found this out. On the other side of the house, I went to replace a trim board that was rotten when I pulled it off. All the stucco slid off of the gypsum board so that's why we're in the process of having the whole house redone yeah that two by four is starting to go too as well yeah but it just breaks crumbles all the way well yeah look at the lath it's completely rusted through And then the gypsum board so it just falls apart I mean it's not even there so whenever we're doing intrusive testing you know it's a, it's almost impossible to get a reading on something like this sometimes because on older stucco with the gypsum board there's nothing to even get a reading off when it, behind you might be able to get a moisture reading out of the insulation or something like that here whenever we stick our moisture meter in it just shoots right through that so you, we have to write it up as comp compromised. And sometimes we have to drill multiple holes to make sure it's gypsum board and not just rotted <laughs> substrate. You know. Yeah, so it's just half inch gypsum board drywall basically is all it is that they used for the substrate in the 70s. Yeah, not having a clearance on the flashing, everything is just rotten. The counter flashing is rotted through. We're gonna have to have a new roof eventually here pretty quick actually also, but why you got to make sure your stucco is installed correctly there you go we're gonna wrap up the video there so, so the steep gear shorts when I first put them on you know they fit pretty comfortably and then whenever I got on that really steep roof I was like expecting to stick like glue and I did not um, I it did slow my descent which is a safety feature that is nice if you are new to walk uh, climbing roofs I you know it's something that you definitely would need uh, to keep you safe but whenever I walked around to the the more traditional roof like the 6 and 12 the 7 and 12 roof on the other side I stuck like glue man as soon as I dropped down you know the shorts grabbed I felt the tension across my legs and I felt like if you're new and you you know I wouldn't even say new but say you slipped and fell those shorts are gonna stop you from sliding off the roof on that side so uh, I then I was like instantly was a little bit more happy uh, about the product that I was in that I was reviewing I was like oh man I don't have to give it a, a zero <laughs> uh, not that I have much uh, reviewing experience but I can tell you that I ended up liking the shorts at the end I do like the fact that you can reach in with your own pockets I like the zippers they feel sturdy they feel like they're gonna last a, a long time uh, on use and wear and tear so impressed with the steep gear shorts if you are interested and in I'll make sure you go to toolexperts.com and order them next thing also I want to address is what Donahoe was talking about whenever he was breaking up open the stucco he was saying that um, he knew when he purchased the property that it was going to be all the siding was gonna to have to be replaced eventually but he got the property at a good price so 
where that I'm bringing this into is that home inspectors, we write up crazy things all the time. You know, we write up all your siding needs to be replaced. So what you need to do whenever that happens is don't, you don't automatically think that you have to walk away from the property. The property could still fit all your needs, you know, the location, you know, the room sizes or whatever, but you want to take the time during that 10 day option period, get the siding contractor out there and get an estimate for how much it's going to cost you to replace it. You can either negotiate on it or see if it fits in your budget to know that you're going to tackle it down the line. But make sure that the property is still worth its value after you put all that money in there. You know, you don't want to put too much money in your property and start to go in the hole. Unless you plan on being there for a really long time and then, you know, the market value will eventually catch up. I'm not a finance guy. Don't just just take the time and see how much it costs. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say and see if it fits in your budget. So with that being said, please like and subscribe to the videos and catch us on the next one. And I am going to knock out the camera next. I promise. All right. See you guys. Bye.